Hey! Oh, Rocket Chick Roger! Hello there! I got an email the other day that I want to discuss with you. I want to share some information with you uh, from this guy. Yeah. It's actually it's a couple. It's a couple named uh, Jerry and Tracy. I'm not going to give you their last name out of respect for them, given their anonymity and their privacy. And here's what it's about. We have. I'm going to read some of this. I mean, it's a long email, so it's like two pages, but I'm not going to read all of this to you. I did a little practice run on this earlier, and I, it was took like 12 minutes to read all of this. But stay with me folks stick stick around okay if you if you get bored with this then you don't really have any interest just move on okay but if you are interested in hearing about life in ecuador stick with this email with this message okay here it goes we have been visiting this city since 2016 and actually moved to this city full time in 2021. At that time and in the years prior, it was very different than it is now. So he went on to talk about the different, he gave some bullet points about things after watching my Brutal Truth video. I have a Brutal Truth video that I have on my private channel that I don't share on this channel. It's stuff that I say about Ecuador, about living in Ecuador, where I just tell it like it is. And if you want to see that video, you're welcome to send me an email and I'll send you a link to it. Maybe one of these days I'll just go ahead and post the damn thing and let everybody see it. But for right now, no, I'm not going to do that. So anyway, the first issue that he addressed living in this particular city, I'll reveal the city in due time here. He says noise. So this is weird and largely incomprehensible problem here and messes with your concept of perceived disrespect. They will have loud music going in a high-density area until 4 a.m. It can be so loud that there is no possible way they are unaware that it is disrupting literally several city blocks and thousands of people all night long. Car alarms, loud motorcycles, weed whackers, and even the occasional punk with straight pipes on a car all are part of this idea that it seems to be okay just to wreck someone else's surroundings. The second point he made is perceived disrespect. Following up on this, we don't see that many dog piles or loose dogs. We do see litter and trash in 40 maintained areas that screen total lack of concern for one city. Surroundings, neighbors, and even simple self-image. On the other hand, for a big South American city, this city does have some good sidewalks and good walkability. Number three, driving. We don't drive in this country mainly because getting a license is a hairball of a PIA. I don't know what he means by PIA. Maybe if you, if you do, you can share it with me. And we have not been there long enough for it to matter. That said, in this city, is a traffic jam most of the time and the roads are small. In the rural areas, the roads are small and the terrain mountainous. It's common to get stuck behind a truck that is grinding up and down the mountain so that it takes and eternity to drive even a deep distance. Number four, law enforcement. The main thing I, I highlighted in this one, crime has increased steadily. Petty crime is a big problem. Scoping and murdering gringos has picked up in recent years. <coughs> Excuse me. So he said, there is a major degradation of quality of life in the city and trumps the low cost of living and good medical care. Add to that the new tax on global assets. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know what that has to do with crime, but anyway. Uh, number five, neglected infrastructure. Very similar in this country to the way you describe Ecuador. Probably not as bad, but similar. Big holes in sidewalk, rebar sticking out. Occasionally, buildings looking about to fall over. Others were halted part way through construction and looked at like some sort of dystopian movie set. Number six, lack of quality in construction and lack of attention to detail. 
Boy, howdy, he says. The apartment interiors are all made of the same cheap materials that decay quickly. All construction is a mix of squares and rectangles <clears throat> with no fine work at all as thresholds that work. Door casings that don't that work well. With no window casings that don't leak. Paint that is real paint as opposed to whitewash, etc. Everything is made to last five years max and water heaters are notorious joke by blowing out random and spewing water into apartments. If you ask someone something they don't know the answer, they will make stuff up. Just outright bullshit. Did old many restaurants, if you challenge them on a short portion or something on the menu, they say it's not available. Number seven, lack of common sense. One of the first Spanish speaking phrases that I learned when I came here was Donde esta sentido común? That's where is your common sense? As he said, grocery stores, here's, here's an example in his country that he's at. I could go on for pages. Grocery stores with no price tags. Hopeless bureaucratic hurdles that accomplish nothing. Point of sale systems that are so slow and unreliable that people actually scoot chairs into some grocery store checkout lines to sit while they wait. People who will be in mid-checkout in a grocery store who will walk away and come back five to ten minutes later with an armload of more stuff and then resume checking out while 20 or so people stand in line there waiting, usually staring at their phone. Point of sale systems that often fail after a time-wasting series of attempts to get them to work. <clears throat> Money and change. This is number eight. Another bogus host job. ATMs distribute large denominations. Merchants don't want large denominations. He mentions this bank, the biggest bank in this country, where they have two accounts. Won't break the large denominations in their ATM dispenses. The reason? They were losing money due to miscounting. Bank tellers who can't count. They all use money counting machines. They are a bank. Counting money is what they do. Nah. They're all liars. They want to force you to go to stores and buy stuff to break the bills. The sad thing is you would think they would conjure up a better lie than our money counting machines and cashiers can't count, even though that is the reason they're here. Number nine, customer service. Forget about it. That's his total summation on customer service. Sounds very familiar. Number 10 and the last item, timeliness. Non-existent. Drivers, trades, social contacts, forget it. Our apartment management has an annual assembly. They state two start times. They tell people to be there at 6 because they know no one will get there until 7. They say the business part of the meeting starts at 7, but they don't start until 8. Even then, some people show up after that. All in all, we might have stuck around, but the increase in crime and the tax attack was too much, so we had departed, unfortunately, because this city is a beautiful city with enormous potential, which it will probably never realize, and it is very expensive for dollar-based U.S. persons. Thanks again for all your great work, Jerry and Tracy. The city that they're talking about is Medellin, it's the country's Colombia. I've heard about this. I've heard that even from Colombians, here I've been told, don't go to Colombia. They say it's worse than Ecuador. <clears throat> a lot of the stuff that he mentioned here, noise, perceived disrespect, driving, law enforcement, neglected infrastructure, lack of quality in construction, and lack of attention to detail, lack of common sense, money and change, customer service, timeliness, all of that exists here too, folks. But maybe not as bad as what he's saying. Noise is the big problem here. Be ready for it. Figure out how to deal with it. Bring earplugs. Bring music cozies. Noise canceling headphones. All that good stuff with you. Or you're not going to be able to deal with it. Noise is just a fact of life here in Ecuador. And I guess all of South America. Proceed disrespect. I think that's a matter of personal interpretation. You know. I, 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 when I see people, local people, walking down the street with their dogs and the dog 
craps on the sidewalk and they walk away and leave it there, to me, that's disrespect for their own city. I don't get it. What? Why do you do it, folks? Same way with throwing trash out. Thank God we have street sweepers here that sweep up the streets. But people will just throw trash out like there's nothing. There's just they don't care. Law enforcement. I could go on about law enforcement. I'm going to be careful what I say about law enforcement because the way I see it, it doesn't exist here. It's not even a thing here. I don't know what, what these cops train for. I didn't know what they do. They, they, they somebody told me they had to pay to go to their own academy. I've never seen a cop doing a traffic stop in the time that I've been driving. Never. I've seen motorcycles pass a cop sitting at a red light and run the red light. And the cop just sit there. And I asked my friend, why come why does the cop go after the guy? You know, there's revenue, there's a ticket. The the, the answer was he's probably not a traffic enforcement cop. So there you have it. There you go. Neglected infrastructure, that's the truth. There is lots of neglected infrastructure. Quality of construction is horrible here. I've seen some good stuff. I've seen some really, really good stuff. But I see so many things in construction here. It just doesn't make sense to me. And when you get here, you'll see it too. But you know what? It all works. I just know that I'm not going to buy any of it. I'll rent, and then when the place falls apart, I'll go rent somewhere else. Lack of common sense, that's very common in South America. You're just not going to see it, folks. Common sense. I've seen people, guys stand on top of a six-foot stepladder. Nobody underneath. He's painting an awning. This is up in Cuenca. We've mentioned this before. You see so many things here that it just makes you shake your head. You go, why? What the hell? You know, it doesn't, why are they doing that? That doesn't make any sense. Money and change. This country does not have a cash management system here. I know that years ago, when I was in school and I worked at a grocery store, I worked at a little, one of these little convenience stores. It was called You Told Em. I was a manager there. And we had in our safe every night a money bag, and that was called our bank. And what that was was loose change. We had a certain amount of money, you know, Couple of large bills, tens, fives, ones, and coin. We had change for everybody. Nobody ever had a problem getting change. Here, I've had to walk out of restaurants and not even eat because they can't change a $20 bill. I had to leave one place, El Espanol in the mall, a very popular restaurant right here in the mall. They couldn't. I, I couldn't pay my bill because then it changed for a $10 bill. And my, my bill was like $5 and some change. And they couldn't change it. I had to come back and pay them later. You know, how can you not have change for a $10 bill? So, it's you know, you, when you get here, you'll have to learn how to manage your cash. You keep your dollar coins for all your taxes. And you try to keep fives and tens, and, you know, it can be a real challenge. That's why I, I've gotten to where I just use my debit card just about everywhere I go anymore. Customer service, forget about it. <laughs> I had a, an expat friend come join me for a cup of coffee. We sat down at Dulce Cremoso, and we both ordered a coffee. And the guy, uh, Pablo, was gone probably... I don't know, three or four minutes, and my friend said, they must have forgot us. And I said, what are you expecting, you know? He thought they were going to come right away with that cup of coffee. Well, even worse was that, you know, they don't walk around with a coffee pot and offer you refills. You want another coffee? You buy you another cup of coffee. You know, they don't come back and check on you and see how you your meal. They don't do that. They don't even bring you the check. You got to get up and go ask for it. So you go into a department store here. I'll never forget. I went into a department store. Help, let's see. Deprati in the mall. I took a basket. I went shopping for all kinds of household stuff and started filling my basket up. 
was trying to find something I couldn't find. I was looking for something like an instant pot. Couldn't find anything. Nobody there to help me. I looked at the back of the store and there were several girls standing back there, just standing there looking at me. And it's like I had to go to get somebody to come and 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 help me. You know, it's very frustrating, but it just doesn't exist. Customer service does not exist here like we are used to in North America. So be ready for that. And then, of course, timeliness. Forget it. Anybody, nobody's on time. Very few people you'll ever find be on time. I'll tell you who's on time. Juan Zambrano, the best private driver you can get in Monta. And he says he's going to be here at 8 o'clock. He's here at 8 o'clock. Or earlier so but other than that I've had contractors come to do something for me I'll be there at 9 in the morning show up at 4 you know or not even show up at all so that's just the way it is that's the life here and that's the end of this video I don't really want to bitch too much because everybody says if you don't hang it I'm gonna leave you know well I'm gonna leave I'm going to leave eventually. I'm going to leave. I'm not staying here forever. So I don't think that's a big secret to anybody. So, anyway, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, bite me. If you like this channel, please subscribe if you want to. It doesn't really make any difference to me, folks. I don't. I'm. I make a hundred dollars a month if that much on this channel. And so, you know, I don't care if you subscribe or not. I really don't. I, my, my objective here is to help. And if I can help one person, one person a day, if I can go to bed at night knowing that I, by God, I'll help somebody, then it's worth it to me. Okay? Have a good one. Ciao, ciao.